Hi there. I have a simple Hanami application here which allows me to show the content of messages in the browser by switching the dynamic segment in the URL and ID of the message. I can also list them together under the slash messages path if I remove the ID completely. I would love to automatically generate a sitemap for my project to list all supported URLs so my website can easily rank in search engines. As you can see in my roots file, I have dynamic roots for each message and I also have static roots for some pages and the root URL. However, in neither of those cases do I want to update the code manually whenever I add a new message or static root. In this episode, I'll let address those requirements showing you how to write a neat sitemap generation for Hanami apps. I will use sitemap generator gem to do the actual sitemap file generation. It's a widely used gem to create and update sitemaps in your projects. And while it's partially done to work with Rails-specific projects, you can also use it in your Hanami applications too. Let me add the gem to the gem file and run the bundle to install it on my system. Then I'll register a new provider named sitemap to run the necessary configuration code and register new dependencies in my container. I'll use the namespace option to make sure all dependencies relevant for the sitemap generation will be grouped under the top level sitemap keyword. Then, in the prepare keyword, I'll require my newly installed gem and apply some configuration options. For now, I only need to set default host, that I'll read from the application settings. At the end, I'll register the generator in the container. As the setting is not defined yet, I'll open the app settings file to add it to the list. I expect this to always be present and to be type of string. This means we cannot boot our application without the environment variable being defined. Because I require the sitemap generator within the prepare block, it won't slow down launching my Hanami console or running unit test as the gem won't be loaded without booting the app. Now let me quickly add the default underscore host environment variable and we're ready to write the actual generation task. Finally, I'll create an interactor file named generate sitemap where I'll put the most of the logic responsible for sitemap creation and overriding. I like to compose my apps using the interactor pattern. I have told a bit more about interactors, operations or service objects if you like to call them that way, in the episode 7. You may find it interesting as you can find there a bit more fancy implementation of the service object that I do here. For now, it only needs my sitemap generator to be injected as a dependency, a call method without any arguments. If you are new to dependency injection or container registration in Hanami, check out my related episodes as this knowledge will be very useful for you in the future content. Within the call, we'll create an empty sitemap and add the messages URL to it. Now I can check if it saves the file in my public directory. In the Ruby console, I can access the interactor class if I want, but because I defined it within the app folder, I have accessible in the container, already initialized and with all dependencies resolved. This is a small boost to the development workflow, so let me use this approach. Now I call it, and as a result, I have the sitemap file available in the public directory right away. Awesome! Let me now add a simple action to browse the file in the browser. In my roots, I will add the get root pointing to my sitemap.show action. Then I create the action file. Inside my handle method, I'll update the response body to a content of my newly generated sitemap file. The content is compressed though, so when I'll visit my browser, I won't be able to preview my URLs. To fix it, I need to set up the response headers so the browser will know how to interpret the data. First will be the content encoding for the information about zipped file and the other pointing to the fact that encoded file is actually XML under the hood. Now the browser is presenting my sitemap without further issues, and from now on I can share my sitemap URL with search crawlers, RSS feeds, or any other platform that can make use of it. However, even though my sitemap is working, it's empty. I want to put inside all my static and dynamic URLs supported by the application, but I don't want to maintain them manually. 
Therefore, I need to use the root inspector to list all my static paths. I will show you how it works in the Hanami console. I need a root inspector object and then call my sandbox application router, passing this inspector to it. Now, when I call my inspector as an output, I get all my roots. By default, a human readable output is present, but I can change the formatter to use the CSV format instead. With this, I can have an access to all my roots in the system using CSV rows to browse them. Let me switch to the interactor and add this inside. I'm going to just paste the required CSV formatter at the top of the file and then paste the code from the console to the beginning of the call method. Then let me just rename the inspector variable to make it more clear what it refers to. The only change is that I want the output of the inspector to be assigned to a CSV object so I can easily iterate through rows. To do so, I'll use the standard CSV library to create a new object from the output. First row is header, with columns info, so I need to add the headers colon true option so the CSV knows to skip it. Then within the create block, I'll iterate through my rows and add the path to my sitemap. Finally, this way I only want to include my static roots and skip the dynamic ones. For that, I'll go to the next loop iteration in case the root method is other than get or the path contains the colon. Now, if I run my interactor in the console and then visit my browser, you'll see that my roots had been added to the sitemap automatically. From now on, whenever I'll add a static root, it will be automatically added here. In case of adding private roots to the application, I can just add the filter in the sitemap to skip unwanted URLs collections, but still, it will be a lot less maintenance than managing each of that manually. You may see here that formatter and root underscore inspector are the dependencies though, and we only need the formatter inspector in the class. That's not perfect because the more dependencies hardcoded in the class, the harder it is to test it properly. Let me refactor this, to simplify the logic and to make the code more testable. I want to extract my formatter, root inspector, and the router method call to a provider. This is also where I'll add my requires. Now let me just copy the missing required files and at the end I can register my inspector in my container under the sitemap wrapper. This code will simplify my interactor by a whole lot. I remove quite a piece of code from here and the only thing I should add is the root inspector that I need to inject from the container. Our sitemap generator is now complete, at least if we talk about static roots. Now though is the time to add each of my messages to it. First of all, I'll add the pages repository to the available dependency list. With this, I can now iterate through messages and for each of them add the sitemap row similarly to what we did before. I just need to change the row to the proper path including message ID and we are ready to go. Let me regenerate the sitemap now and make sure everything works as expected. Voila! As you can see, all my roots are added. You may notice that there is a duplicate of the root URL here that I could get rid of, but I'll leave this for you as a little coding challenge. Let me know if you successfully got rid of this duplication. This is all I have for you today. We successfully generated dynamic sitemap for our Hanami application that we can trigger whenever we want. Regenerating the sitemap can take a while though, so in the next episode I'll show you how to leverage background jobs to make it more production ready. Stay tuned and subscribe to not miss that. If you like this video, hit a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content in this fashion, subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the notification bell. You can also subscribe to the newsletter and follow me on Twitter. I want to especially thank my recent sponsors, Akila Siemane, Bill Tain, and Benjamin Klatz. By helping me with a few dollars per month creating this content, you're helping the open source developers and maintainers to create amazing software for you. And remember, if you want to support my work even without money involved, the best you can do is to like, share and comment on my episodes and discussion threads. Help me add value to the open source community. If you know other great gems you wish me to talk about or have an amazing idea for upcoming episodes, 
please open a discussion using the GitHub discussion threads you can find at the bottom of any published article. As usual, here you can find two of my previous videos. Thank you all for supporting my channel, you are awesome, and have a nice rest of the day.